Using the Union SQL injection vulnerability discussed in previous videos, we're going to look at how to write files to the operating system using SQL injection. So we're going to use the same injection that we have been using. It's a Union injection. Essentially, what happens is the system on this page will select four fields from the accounts table. We figured out it was four fields in previous videos, what their data types were, and that the second field outputs to the page. But we won't be trying to do output here. We're going to try to use this vulnerability to close off this query by closing off username and then unioning a second query. In the second query, we're going to try to write files to the operating system. So we'll go ahead and put the basics out. It's four columns double dash and a space to end the query. And this should work. We'll put a one in the second column just as a test to make sure that we have the basics of the SQL injection correct. And we see a one has appeared in the username field as expected. So how are we going to do this? Well, basically, it doesn't matter which column we inject into. We're just going to inject in the commands to write files using MySQL. The way this works is that we select something into dump file and then say the name of the file. So we'll just do test.txt. Then we go ahead and end the query with a double dash, comment symbol, and a space. So here it looks like we're going to be writing the number one into dump file. And if we take a look at the system, we can see that there's test.txt written into the OWASP 10 database because that's where we're currently at. Now, normally in these videos, we don't show the file system or other cheats like that because it's not very realistic. However, in this video, we're going to go ahead and use the operating system's file browser so we can see what's actually occurring. Now, our target is actually going to be trying to get something written into the web server itself because we want to add a new PHP file to the web server as a backdoor, something that looks a lot like that. So we'll delete this file to make sure that there's nothing there. And then we'll go back over into Firefox and put in a new injection. And the injection is going to look something like this. We're going to have a form with a table in it. It only has one field, an input field with a generous width, and an input button to execute a command. And it's going to have a little PHP script that does nothing but execute a shell command on the operating system. So in order to inject this, we've already gone ahead and put that exact text onto one very long line. And we have the path already set up into XAMPP that will inject the file into the correct position. So we've simply replaced test.txt with the entire path that we want. We have the comment symbol at the end with a space. And we're going to copy that and make sure we get the little space at the end because otherwise we'll get an error. And then we're going to inject that into the name field. So we have that whole long injection already placed inside of there. Let's go ahead and hit go and wait. And then let's go back and look at our operating system file browser. Hit F5 to refresh. And we can see that a new file called backdoor.php has showed up. Now let's go back to the web browser and see if we can browse to this page we've injected. Backdoor.php. Enter and browse. And sure enough, here's our simple little page. Let's do a dir command just to test it out. And we have now gained root shell access into the system by injecting a backdoor using SQL injection.